All right, guys, welcome to part two of my four-part series on the tractor preferences. In part two, I'm gonna talk about how to configure all of your loading and transport sections. So we're gonna talk about how to configure how tracks are loaded and how they behave, and also transport settings such as play, tempo range, key lock, and more. The loading section is where you can configure how tracks are loaded in tractor. Here's what all of the loading options are for. Loading only onto stop deck will make it so you can't load a track into a deck if it's playing. If this option is checked, you'll need to stop the deck from playing before you can load a new track into the deck. Stop playback at end of track will stop a deck from playing when it gets to the end of a song. If you have this turned off, the deck will continue playing even between songs until you push the play button to stop it. The duplicate deck when loading same track option will allow you to load automatic doubles of a track that you're playing. If a track is playing in one deck and you load the same track into another deck, Tractor will duplicate the track into the new deck at the same time and same speed as the deck you copied it from. Having the load next at end of track option will load the next track in the selected playlist into a deck when the track before it is finished playing. Initially queue to load marker will allow you to use Tractor's load markers. A load marker is a special queue point that when you load a track that has a load marker in it, the track will load right to that queue point. Activate fade in and fade out markers will let you place fade in and fade out markers in your track. These markers will mark when the next track will start playing and the current track will start to fade out, allowing for automatic crossfades. This option is good if you want to use tractor in cruise mode, which will put tractor in autopilot mode allowing for playback and even syncing of your tracks for hours on end without having to be at the computer. The cruise loops playlist option is also for cruise mode and will restart a playlist at the beginning once it's finished playing the last track in the playlist. Reset all deck controls when loading track will reset all of the deck controls when you load a new track such as the tempo fader. Reset all mixer controls when loading track will reset mixer controls like the EQ and filter when you load a new track. If you're using the Tractor Control S4, S2, or any other MIDI controller for internal mixing, I would leave both of these options off since the knob position won't match the software when you load each track. The tempo section is where you can choose your tempo range. This is like customizing the pitch fader on a turntable, except you're customizing Tractor's internal pitch fader range and telling Tractor how much it can increase or decrease the internal tempo. In order to pick a good tempo range, you'd want to think about the speed or BPM range you want to play at during any given set. If you're playing multiple genres, you probably want a 35 to 50% tempo range, whereas if you're playing one genre, which is almost the same BPM, you can use a smaller BPM range like 4 to 8%. The tempo bend buttons are the forward and backward arrow buttons in the decks and tractor. Pushing them is like nudging the metal edge of a turntable or the outer edge of a CD player. It'll give the track a push or a pull, forward or backwards. The tempo bend sensitivity adjust will adjust how sensitive these buttons are when you press them. If you want the buttons to get progressively more sensitive as you hold the button down, choose the tempo bend progressive sensitivity option. Now let's talk about sync mode. There's two types of syncing in Tractor, tempo sync and beat sync. The sync mode that you use determines how the sync button will behave when you press it. Tempo sync will sync the BPM of the deck to whatever deck is the master, and will also temporarily sync the phase of the deck, which will move the phase meter to the zero position. Once the deck's phase drifts from the zero point on the phase meter, the sync button will be dimmed. Now beat sync will keep both the BPM and the phase synced at all times when it's on. If you scratch a deck, the sync button will be dimmed temporarily while it's out of sync, but will be resynced immediately when the deck is playing normally again. In the key lock section, you can choose what kind of key lock mode you want to use. Key lock will fix the pitch of a song while letting you alter the tempo. So when you slow the song down, it doesn't sound like evil monsters. Or when you speed up the song, it doesn't sound like chipmunks. Chipmunks, 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 chipmunks. Key lock is a little yellow musical note inside of Tractor. The type of key lock you use depends on if you're using scratch control or not or how powerful of a computer you have. If you have a slower processor, you'll want to use eco mode. 
If you have a fast processor, you can use high Q mode. If you're using Timecode CD, Timecode Vinyl, or even Jog Wheels to control Tractor, you'll want to use Scratch Mode. If you're not using Timecode Control or Jog Wheels, you want to use the Normal Mode. Scratch Mode will fix the pitch all the way to plus 50% and down to negative 35%, while Normal Mode will fix the pitch all the way to negative 90% and plus 100%. The Loops Auto Detect Size option will determine the length of a time that a track is considered a loop. I have mine set to 48 seconds, so any track that's under 48 seconds is automatically considered a loop. And if I load it into a deck, the loop will be turned on automatically. This is great if you want to play homemade samples you made with the sample decks in a deck and tractor. The minimum play time adjusts the time you need to play a track before it's marked as played. If a track is marked as played, it'll be added to the history section for this session and will be marked with a check mark. It'll also show up in the archive for this session, and this play count will be raised. Now let's talk about the beat counter. The beat counter will count how many phrases, bars, and beats you've played for and can be displayed in the deck's header. A bar is four beats, and a phrase is how many bars you determine with the bars per phrase slider. I have mine set to 8 bars since most dance music is in 8 bar phrases. The mouse control section describes the behavior of the decks when you click and drag directly on the waveform view in a deck. These are the different mouse control modes. In vinyl mode, holding the mouse and dragging it back and forth works like scratching or spinning a record. In snap mode, the mouse arrow will always snap to the nearest beat or transient in the track, marked by white lines in the waveform. If you click and hold on the beat, it will play as long as the mouse button is held down. If you right click on the beat, the deck will start playing where you clicked. The Q play button or cut button will play a track starting at a temporary Q point and can behave in two different ways depending on the Q play mode. Instant mode will instantly start playing the track when you push Q play. On release mode, we'll start playback after releasing the cue play button. I hope you guys enjoyed part two on loading and transport settings. In part three, I'm going to talk about how to customize your screen layouts in Tractor. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.